The following programme is made possible by the friends and partners of Creation Today. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. That line came from a book written in 1992, and today that idea is actually being questioned. Now, I learned years ago from my friend Mark Gunger's series, Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage, that men's brains and women's brains are not the same. If you've seen it, you know about the man and how he has a nothing box and you know the woman's brain is like spaghetti okay so the question is what is the science of the brain now there's no doubt we are living in a culture that is feeding the next generation a completely different concept their message hey guys there's no difference between men and women they really are the same it's gotten to the point where culture is actually communicating that a boy can actually be a girl and a girl can actually be a boy. Hey, you can be whatever you want to be, right? So what's the difference between men and women? That's what we're covering in today's Creation Today show. Now, if you are new to the Creation Today show, you need to know we are on a mission to disciple the world one person at a time. We want to take the stumbling blocks that keep people from seeing Jesus Christ as the creator and the redeemer of mankind into stepping stones on their journey to understand and know the truth. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, podcast and television audience out there, thank you guys for peeking into the Creation Today community for this conversation you get to enjoy the first half of the conversation. Now, if you ever want to be part of our mission to disciple the world and get the benefit of enjoying the second half of the conversation, then join our community. Come on over to creationtoday.org, partner with us, and not only enjoy the second half, but know that we're reaching the world with Christ. Uh, to my partners, it is always great to see you guys on here. William and Scott, PK, you're going to love this one, aren't you? Uh, Lisa, great to have you on here. Amber, thank you for hanging out with us. Um, it's always good to have you guys on here. I love your feedback. I love your comments. I had an idea in light of today's conversation, okay, since it's just like us that can see this. My partners can see the chat and stuff. Uh, if you happen to have a great, not too offensive joke about men and women, Go ahead and throw that in the chat. I want to see how funny you guys actually are, okay? My guest today to discuss the science of the brain, men versus women, has been researching the subject for more than 20 years. Uh, is that because is that she's only been married for 20 years? You think that's the case? We'll find out, okay? She's written curriculum for Rebecca book, Focus on the Family, Answers in Genesis, and Reasons for Hope. Her love for learning has led her to get degrees in education, curriculum and instruction, and educational administration. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mrs. Holly Varnum. Ms. Holly, thanks for joining us today. I am so excited to be here for this conversation today, Eric. I'm gonna do my best not to tell too many men and women jokes, but this subject, I'm telling you, man, it, it's fertile soil for some good laughs. I mean, you know why women don't work as hard as men, don't you? Why is that? They get it right the first time. They don't have to work as hard as men do. Oh my goodness. Well, you've been studying the science between uh, the, the differences between men and women. And I listened to a talk you gave and I thought, oh my goodness, we have to discuss that. What made you want to learn about these differences? Like what was the starting point for you? All right, so it's not about my marriage. It actually... <laughs> Um, but I learned so much that helped me become a better wife and help my husband understand me a little better. But um, back in the early 2000s, I was asked to become a principal at a charter school in Colorado that was started by five pastors. And um, the Lord led me to accept that position. And for some reason, I don't think I asked the right questions because when they sent me my contract, it said on it that it would be for a middle school, which I knew, about 400 students. And these students would be divided for core classes by their sex, by their gender. And I'm like, 
Oh, that would be interesting. So I started quickly researching. Okay, is there a special way to teach a all class, all boys class? Is there a special way to teach an all girls class? And that was when I hopped up on an organization called the Gurian Institute, where that was their specialty and got to go to a conference. And that started my learning process for learning about the brain and learning things. I was just, wow, mind blown. Um, because when you see it on a scan, when you know that it aligns with God's word, when you, you know that it aligns with um, what you're observing in kids and in adults, it's like this all makes so much sense. Well, I, I think of today's culture and we're watching the whole boys becoming girls, girls becoming boy, or the attempt to or calling or classifying them as that. And I cannot help but think that this is, this is just yet another rejection of what God's word has said. God says, I made a male and female, and this is just the next step of trying to completely and totally reject God. Do you have any, as we jump into this, any thoughts on that? I know it's kind of a little bit of a side trail, but in, this, in a sense, it's the same vein. Um, one of the things I had written down that I talk about with people on this is that we have to remember that there are certain principles of brain-based learning. I mean, I'm coming from an educational perspective, but one of the principles as a believer that I know to be true because of God's word being true is that the brain is intellectual, social, and emotional. And because we were created in the image of God, Genesis 127, <laughs> created in his image, and male and female, he created us, we are going to reflect his character. We know that God is intellectual. We know that God is social. He made us for community with him. And we know that he is emotional, his deep love for us. So it stands to reason that he made our brains the same way. Um, what? What a beautiful way to, to put that. I hadn't, I hadn't put those words to it, kind of that trinity of thought in my mind. That's a, a fascinating way to look at it. Um, I, I, I would love for you to take us through some of the science that you've learned uh, and talk about uh, the differences between men and women. Uh, it seems like you are a very smart woman, a uh, very smart woman. And uh, I think it is interesting. Most men are attracted to smart women. Uh, because opposites attract. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to learn from you today. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think I need to go back to um, how we know things differently today than we did, say, 50 years ago. Um, when when uh, educational psychologists were getting deep into studying, learning, and education back in the 40s, all the way up to the 70s. All they had was observation. Uh, so they had come to the conclusion that people are the way they are because of influences and their environment. And so they were actually trying to propagate the thinking that when a baby is born, it is neither male nor female other than its genitalia, but that you can direct how that child grows up, what their preferences will be by what you expose them to. Well, when uh, technology advancements came about in the 70s and you had things called the SPECT scan, and I won't give you what that acronym stands for because I'll lose people right there. Uh, a spec scan, a PET scan, uh, functional MRIs. And uh, just a side note, it was a Christian physician who invented the MRI. And it was so, I, I could just imagine what he thought the first time he saw a picture and just his wonder of God's creation when he saw that. So anyway, with the SPECT scans and the PET scans, uh, SPECT scans actually allow you to see the blood flow and the activity within the brain. 
and it gives you um, three perspectives. It shows you areas of the brain that are working well, areas of the brain that are working hard, and areas of the brain that aren't working hard enough. So suddenly the scientific community, the medical community was realizing the doors that were open for them to be able to identify cancer, to identify depression, to identify schizophrenia, Alzheimer's, all of these disorders of the brain, because they would see a difference between a healthy brain and a non-healthy brain. Well, in this process, they also started seeing differences between the male and the female brain. And almost by accident, they're like, why are these so different? And they realized these were the male brains, these were the female brains. So um, if our friends would show slide number one that I brought with me today, I'm going to give you a quick lesson on the three main parts of the brain. So you'll see at the top, you have the cortex and the cortex is responsible for thinking and reasoning. And then the middle part of the brain is the limbic system. And that's what's where our emotional seat is in the brain. And then the bottom is the brain stem. So I'm gonna go in reverse now to help us remember this, because if you know about these three parts of the brain, it pretty much helps you understand what I'm going to say next. So think of my clenched fist. The brain stem, if you look at that picture, looks like a clenched fist. That is where your flight or fight response occurs. So you can think of that fighting fist. Um, that is the brain stem. When, the, when you feel threatened or fearful, the blood flow from your brain is going to be targeted in that region. Okay, then you have the emotional part, and you can think of that as the protector, your emotions. Um, the emotional part is next, and then the thinking and reasoning part is the outer part of the gray matter, where you'll hear that referred to. Okay, so we have brainstem, limbic system, and cortex. One of the things that these brain scans have shown us is that when a male brain feels threatened or fearful, the blood flow will go first and pretty much stay in the brainstem, fight or flight. That is why when a man is um, concerned about something, I'll word it that way, instead of angry or, um, or reactive, you know, his, the blood flow is primarily in that brainstem. It helps you understand that. Okay. When the female feels fearful, when the female's going through something, her blood flow is going to be first and foremost in the emotional. And you, you visually can see that with females. They will get all upset about something. They'll cry, they'll laugh, they'll, um, and then afterward, you will see them do something about it um, with the fight or flight. And then where we want that blood flow to be, the oxygen that is carried in the blood is to be in all parts of the brain, but mostly in the emotional and the thinking part of the brain. So how do we get that blood flow to shift? Well, if you know anything about how the body works, you know that when we eat something, guess what? The blood flow goes to our mid -re region. So you need to put something up here that will draw the blood flow and the oxygen to that upper part of the brain. So you do that by asking questions, wow. ask questions. So if, when I was a middle school principal, I got to have a lot of these conversations with upset children. And I would say, okay, I can see you're upset. What happened? So they'll start explaining. And at first they're crying or they're angry or don't even want to talk about it yet. And I'll say, let me try to talk you through this. So I'll tell them what I know. And I'll say, okay, this is what I heard. Now tell me what I need to know. And so then, and I, what I noticed within a minute or two, Eric, as soon as they had to use the thinking part of their brain, the emotions settled down. Wow. It was pretty incredible. And it was 
without exception, 100% of the time when a person was upset, I did this with parents. You think I had my fill of angry parents coming in the office and I would sit down with them and I would just say, help me understand why you're upset. And so they would explain their part and they'd be very angry. And I would say, I can see you're angry. Can you tell me what in your viewpoint would be a good solution to this issue? And as soon as they had to think about it and share what they thought was a good solution, whether it was going to happen or not, they got to share their side and then they would calm right down. And then I would say to them, well, here's what I can do. Here's what I can't do. And by that time, they would be able to listen to my side. So are you hearing how we can work on conflict res resolution just by knowing that about the brain? And they would leave happy and I would become their favorite person ever because I listened <laughs> to them. Uh, so that's an example of why it's important to understand just those three parts of the brain. Okay, now we're gonna start. No, I just, oh, go I ahead. gotta say, I was, I've been married for 24 years. I don't know that I've experienced that from my wife at all. I just want you to know, honey, you're perfect. <laughs> you're good. Okay, all right, now. <laughs> So my husband gets to be my test subject. So I don't know if he'd say <laughs> the same thing. All right, so if we can now show slide number two. Okay, I got myself a bigger one because I need to read off of this and that's kind of tiny print there. Um, okay, so we're gonna start with the frontal lobe that's in the upper left from my perspective. Um, and I'm just going to do a brief overview and you're going to understand why it's important for us to just have this overview, because this splits the brain out into lobes, into different sections. So you understand where the different thinking occurs in the brain. So the frontal lobe we've already talked about a little bit is planning and reasoning, problem solving, recognizing and regulating emotion. So that enables us, remember I said, when you ask those questions, it gets them into the thinking part, then they can regulate those emotions that they are having. Um, it also helps us develop social skills. So when you meet someone that you're saying, wow, they're really socially awkward, um, they need to develop that frontal lobe a little more. Uh, so then we have the parietal lobe in the back recognizing sensations and body position, objects, spatial judgments, understanding time. So spatial awareness time is in that parietal lobe. Then down below that occipital lobe, integrating and processing visual information like color, shape, and distance. That's gonna be a key piece in the next slide that I show you. And then the cerebellum controls balance and muscle coordination. Then we go back to the brain stem, which is also responsible, not just for fight or flight, but for your involuntary parts of what makes you live. You know, your breathing, your heartbeat, your, you know, the blood flow through your body, all of that. And then the temporal lobe, which is underneath, almost it hugs that emotional center of the brain understanding language, auditory information, organizing information, memory, and learning. Um, so you can see how your emotions are going to play a role in how well you can learn. Um, so which will take us back to those three big parts. Okay, so you're not going to remember everything I just went over. You're not even going to remember, maybe you'll remember the three parts, but I want you to take a look at slide number three because this is where the rubber meets the road on how the male brain and the female brain are wired differently. So what this I'm is- I'm just happy to see the male brain actually wired at all. This is good news. This it's, is good. It's such good news. And you're gonna see some really strong areas for the male as well as the female, but they're different and it's so cool. So what you see here, it's called brain mapping. And, um, when I was just checking up on research, when I knew I was going to be here today, I'm like, oh, what is the more modern research showing us today? Well, it's interesting because if you look definitely 2020 and beyond, you're going to see more articles that will claim there really are no differences between the male and female brain. And 
I'm like, wow, that's so interesting how when you've got something that has become politicized, how they will change the science. But uh, yeah. you can't argue with 200,000 SPECT scans that have been analyzed over 30 years by Dr. Daniel Amen. He runs the Amen Clinics. Um, and I love how his name is Amen, because then you can just <laughs> look at what he says and say, Amen. <laughs> um, but his stuff, he definitely is a proponent for it. There is there are distinct differences between the male and the female brain. But this these this picture here is the mapping of an active adolescent male brain and an active adolescent female brain based on probably a series of scans and they were able to map where the synapses were connecting. By the way, one of the um, claims in these more up-to-date articles is saying that the they're focused on the neurons of the brain. Well, the neurons are very similar between the male and the female, where a lot of the difference comes is how the blood flows to those neurons mm. and when, and how the synapses, the glial cells connect those neurons. That's where the differences are. But because they're focusing on a part that is similar, they're going to be able to come up with a 99% similarity rate. So that that's mind blowing because of culture, because of cultural pressures, mm -hmm. we're like, oh, well, instead of looking at the differences, let's look at the similarities. Oh, they both have gray matter. They both have white matter. They both have neurons. And, and it, they're just looking at similarities rather than being mm -hmm. able to pull out these differences because they don't want to see them anymore. That's interesting. It is. So if you think about what we had just looked at, look at the male brain. And at the top of the male brain, you'll see very little connection. Do you remember what goes on in that part of the brain? If we need to go back to slide two for people to have a quick review, that works. Okay, so the parietal lobe. Can you read that, Eric? Or prefrontal cortex, uh, planning, re oh, no, no, uh, parietal yeah. lobe. Yeah, uh, it's the frontal lobe. Okay, planning, reasoning, problem solving, uh, recognizing and regulating emotions and social skills. Okay, go back to the male female brain. <laughs> He's missing? not connected. <laughs> it's missing a connection here. So remember, this is an adolescent brain, it's not an adult brain. So this is an adolescent brain. So in the adolescent boy, you've got to understand when, the, when they do something ridiculous and you say, what were you thinking? And they say, I wasn't, they're telling you the truth. <laughs> they, I mean, really they really weren't are. thinking. They really weren't thinking. They weren't thinking about consequences. They weren't thinking about problem solving. Um, and it just makes so much sense. The first time I saw this, scan, I'm like, oh my goodness, I now get seventh grade boys. I get them now. Um, <laughs> so that's where you see there's a lack of connection going on in the adolescent brain. Also notice that all of the mapping seems to be going north to south in the oh, male. Yeah. Notice that. So their two hemispheres may not be connecting as well. If you were to glance over at the female brain, you'll see hers, and that's where the spaghetti comes. So the male <laughs> brain, there's your Mars, all in one direction, up and down. Um, and it's, again, I'll, I'll talk about something really quick in a minute that people are gonna say, well, I know somebody who, you know, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But so now let's look at the female brain. And notice where the connections are. The female actually has some connections going on in that frontal lobe, an adolescent female. She's got a lot of things going on in her cortex. She's got a lot of things going on in the temporal lobe. You can see that in the second picture in the front, the lower front part. But look where there is very little connection going on in the female brain the back part. Yep. So now yep. let's go back to slide number two so we can understand what she's missing. So the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe. 
So the female has difficulty with recognizing sensations and body position, recognizing objects, spatial judgments, time, um, visual information like color, shape, and distance. I'm going to share a personal story that I'm not proud of, but it, it <laughs> revolutionized my marriage. Okay, so my husband, whenever he was the one driving, whenever we would get to our destination, it felt to me like he was going to run into whatever he was parking up against. And I'm like, Paul, please, you're going to hit that. He goes, Holly, I'm going to stop the car and I want you to get out and go look. So I get out of the car. I go to the front and I'm like, where did that three feet come from? <laughs> because in my mind, in my mind, he was like two inches from a pole or the curb, whatever it was. And when I saw that brain scan of the female brain, it made sense to me. The mm. spatial judgment, the distance, the depth perception was not as developed in me as it was in my husband. It was natural for him. He, in fact, the male brain can be probably about within an inch of where they think they actually are, which is pretty cool. That's so, awesome. I hope I have saved some arguments from happening between husbands <laughs> and wives on this. So when your husband says, I, I really didn't think about that, believe him. He's probably he didn't. Him. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the other interesting thing. These, the brain is not fully developed in females until it can range from 20 to 25 years of age. So we cannot expect adolescents to think like adults. And mm -hmm. we're often guilty of that as adults thinking they should know better. Well, they don't. And so we have to understand that. Well, the male brain, it's usually about 30 before <sighs> the male brain is fully developed. And I have, Eric, I've had people say, you could it range up to 50? <laughs> I was going to say, I just bought a motorcycle and I'm thinking it might be 50. Okay. Cause it's like, oh man. Yeah. So these are things that is important for us to understand, to be able to work better with each other, communicate with each other, but to understand this is just a one basic difference. Okay. We're going to go a step further here. Well, I want to get, I want to get into oh, more and, okay. and I want to ask you in this next half, I watched a BBC documentary and they said, Oh, the reason for this. And then they gave a completely evolutionary reason. So I'll ask you about that next, but before we go on, Hey, Facebook, YouTube, my podcast audience and television audience, I got to cut you loose. Thank you for hanging out and peeking into the creation today community. I really would love you to join us. Come on over to creationtoday.org and let's partner together to change the world. Before we go though, uh, Mrs. Holly, you, you have been involved at Reasons for Hope for a number of years and there's a couple of resources that you would highly recommend. For example, uh, Juan's book, Critical Thinking and How to Think, yes. A Crash Course in Critical Thinking. Uh, that would be a great one to get. You can see it on the screen there. Uh, but man, you guys got to check out uh, the, the books and the resources. I guess we carry this one, but I'm loving what you're doing. You got more books coming out. You can go to Reasons for Hope, r4h.org, r4h.org, to see more of the work that Holly's done, uh, to get her lecture series and see those. So I uh, encourage you to, to do that and get to r4h, r-f-o-r-h.org, and check out all the work that they're doing because it really is fantastic. I really do love it. Thank you guys for joining me this week. Next week, oh my goodness, it's going to be a good show next week. I went to the ICC, the International Conference on Creation, and they brought there some of the brightest minds in the world. Yes, there were females there, and I got interviews with them, and you're going to love the conversations. You're going to get updated on dark matter, on astronomy, uh, on chemistry, and and uh, dinosaurs. And anyway, it's going to be a fascinating conversation next week. Join me live at noon right here as we rehash the ICC, the International Creation Conference. Thank you guys. God bless. We'll see you next week. All right, Miss Holly, it's just us and our partners now. We can make all the jokes we want, okay? We're not going to get uh, socially punished for, uh, for telling jokes at this